Taylor here with AcroSpray Drones. It's a beautiful day here in Missouri and a perfect day to show you guys the Agris T50. This drone just came in. This is my first time in the field with it. So I thought, how better to show you guys how this operates by flying an actual field on our actual trailer that we'll be using for custom application, filling the drone, swapping batteries, showing you guys the software, everything you need to know about the Agris T50. So I have the remote right here, it's booted up, the drone's booted up, and it's full, ready to go. I'll start a screen recording here so you guys can see what I'm seeing. All right, as you can see, we have no internet. Now, you guys may have heard that you have to have internet to operate drones, that's false. All DJI systems, you can show up at the field, no internet, no 4G, not connected to the server, and guess what? We still have our maps. Our maps download, our Google Maps satellite imagery download from the internet while we have uh, Wi-Fi on the remote. We map this field that you see here. And when we get to the field here, actually in the field, we don't have to have Wi-Fi and we still have satellite imagery. We still have all of our maps. We could have 20 different maps across here. We could just click on the ones we wanted to fly, hit use. We can set our rate, our speed, our height, and our route spacing all right here, or you can just select the template like we've done here, and that fills all that in for you. That's literally it. That's all you have to do. Hit start, and the drone's ready to go. T50 inherits the legendary, reliable design of the Agris T40. See, the Agris T40 sprayed millions of acres in 2023 across thousands of farms. And we had extremely few problems with the powertrain, with the ESCs, with the motors, with the spray systems, with the software. The T40 is a phenomenal drone and still is a phenomenal drone. So our thought was, well, if it's not broke, why fix it? You know, why improve a T40? Why improve the best spraying drone on the market whenever it's already so good? The great thing about the T50, it's almost exactly like the T40. Same props, same motors. The frame is almost identical. And the spray system and radar system is even better. Terrain following with drones is incredibly important. You see out here, we've got a flat field. We could literally turn all of our radars off, no obstacles, no terrain challenges, uh, very, very simple operation out here. But these drones thrive in the hills. You know, that's, that's where you have your highest ROI. How do you get an airplane? How do you get a helicopter in the hills? How do you get an airplane? How do you get a helicopter in small fields surrounded by trees? You can't, but a drone can. If you have good terrain following, if you have good obstacle avoidance, and the T-50, brings those to the table. So as you can see here on the screen, we can monitor the progress of the drone. We've got the drone's location in red, it's the triangle, so it already made it down. This is a half mile long field here. So it made it down 2,600 feet, turned around to spraying back. And you can see right here in the middle of the field, it's actually gonna be able to spray all the way back to us, then make another half pass back. And we're probably gonna go ahead and bring it home whenever it makes it back to us to shorten our deadhead time. Up here at the top, you can see we can view our live volume. So we have about 4.9 gallons left. That's volume by weight. The T50 has scales on the tank, and those scales measure the weight, converts that into volume, and gives us a live readout. And that's how we get our empty tank location. We can monitor our battery life. You can see we still have 71% battery, and the drone's almost all the way back to us right now. 28 satellites on this drone. You can see up here at the top. Now, most of you guys, if you've ran ag equipment, you've probably seen that you've only got 12, 13, 14 satellites in a lot of fields. We've never had fewer than 26 satellites on the Agris T40 in any field we've ever operated in, and I expect the same thing out of the Agris T50. Our altitude, speed, distance, and radar is all on the screen. We can monitor everything right here. And of course, our FPV camera we can watch it come back home. 
and move the camera up and down as well. All right, I'm gonna go and hit that return home button. Bring it back home, it's gonna stop spraying automatically and then return back home to us and come down to the trailer automatically. There you can see, this is new on the T50. Because of the incredible radar, you can actually spin on the way home and reduce some time, face the same direction as it faces whenever it takes off. That way it aligns the fill port on the same side. Just like that, one tank done. I'll grab a fresh battery because we are at 61%, but we kind of like to swap our battery every time. Uh, that way we increase the redundancy, just in case there's a problem out in the field. We use our fill through cap on the T50. This is not standard. This is an upgrade from Hager Spray drones. Works really well with our filling system here. While that's filling, I'm gonna go ahead and swap this battery. Just one battery on the T40 system and T50 system, meaning you don't have to carry two batteries out every time making operational efficiency that much greater. Battery in one hand, hose in the other hand, come out, fill the drone, swap the battery all at the same time. So here's the tank here. The tank is 40 liters or 10 and a half gallons. We actually have enough for another full round here. So I'm gonna go ahead and shut this off. Tank goes into our impeller pumps, comes out down here into rotary atomizers. This doesn't have standard nozzles on it. These atomizers spin as the uh, as liquid's coming out. That rotational force actually uh, creates your droplets. And the faster these spins, the smaller droplets you get. The slower it spins, the larger droplets you get. As you can see, we are booted up. It has found its satellites. It takes about 20 seconds all it takes. So as soon as you fill the tank, retu return to your remote, you have satellites. We can swipe. Now the drone's going to take off, go back to work. What you just saw was what we call one cycle, a takeoff to takeoff cycle. That's how you get your efficiency with these drones. The faster you can do takeoff to takeoff cycles and the more acres per cycle you can do, the more acres per hour you can do. Because really operating these drones is extremely simple. I mean, you saw it. All we have to do is press takeoff, press land and monitor while it goes. I'm going to go and start the generator up and then we'll talk about swath width on these drones because you can see out there the drone itself is only about 10 feet wide but we're getting a 30 probably about a 33 foot pattern right now. Remote start on generators is nice. If you guys get a generator remote start is really cool. There we go. Generator's on. This battery is going to start charging uh, right away. So you guys saw that swath width on the drone. So how do these drones get you know, obtain a 32 foot or 30 foot swath. It's called vortex. So as, as air moves through the props, there's a massive amount of air. And so it actually pushes that air down and then, it, and then it pushes it out because it can't just go straight down. So it pushes it down and then out and then it recirculates back up through the props. And as the drone's flying forward, you actually get a trailing vortex behind the drone. So you have your droplets going down from the rotors you have the vortex pushing those droplets out, and as you fly faster, that vortex gets wider and wider. So height and speed create a wider swath. And with the Agris T40 and T50, we see the widest swath of any spray drone on the market because of the way the props are designed uh, and because of the coaxial uh, nature of those props, in addition to the rotary atomizers, which I'll show you here. So we can monitor everything on the drone, but what happens if, let's say, uh, we forgot to change our droplet size? <coughs> We're doing a, you know, a fungicide, and it's windy, and we want really coarse droplets so that our product stays on target. Tap to the left here, tap that button. You can see we're at 320 microns. We can do 500 microns. By just doing that, hit apply, and that slows those discs down. It slows those rotary atomizers down so we're still getting the same amount of product per acre, two gallons per acre that's automatically controlled. All we did was adjust the speed of our nozzles and you can see our, the amount of drift that we got actually changed because we do have about five mile an hour wind. We're getting a really, really good pattern right now. 
don't know if you guys can see that, but that is a textbook pattern right there. You can see it coming down from the drone, that vortex actually pushing it out to the side on both sides of the drone. That's perfect. So we talked a bit about how the automation is controlled on the spray system. Now, how is that done actually? So the scale on the tank combined with a dual electromagnetic flow meter work together to keep your flow rate accurate. So you don't have to tell it what flow rate you want, you just tell it how many gallons per acre you want. And then based on your flight speed and based on your route width, it determines how fast to run those pumps and automatically controls that. It's actually dynamic. And so as it speeds up and as it slows down, it will change the pump flow. Now you see here, I'm actually maneuvering the drone manually myself. The DJI system is awesome because it's a hybrid between manual and autonomous function. I can take over manually at any point in time with the sticks, bring the drone down nice and easy, get it out of danger, land it precisely on the trailer where I want. Let's do one more tank and I'll show you guys uh, a bit of those manual features here. As you can see, this battery here, we've already got four bars on this battery. I actually started it late. We actually had a minute lag time. So we could pull that battery and use it, uh, but we're gonna rotate in our third battery in this set here. Turn our pump on. Again, we came back with about, looks like uh, over 60% battery this time. On these big fields, because this drone flies fast, empties the tanks out fast, you can actually get two flights per battery charge. Why do that whenever literally you just saw me change that battery out in the same time it took me to fill this tank? Why risk it, increase redundancy, swap that battery every time? You never know when something happens. Now you guys also saw down there, one of the big upgrades on the T50 is this radar. We talked about improved terrain following. This radar is what does that. This radar combined with this radar, the front radar, rear radar, the two biggest radars I've ever seen on a spray drone, one for terrain following, rearward obstacle avoidance, one for front, side, and upward obstacle avoidance. Huge improvement. I'll show you guys a few things here on the manual flight. So we get a lot of questions about, uh, well, how do I operate around power lines? Um, I don't trust the drone to fly under them by itself or over them by itself. Well, we can actually take off manually. We'll do that right now. Taking off manually with the sticks. You guys have ever operated any DJI drone? It operates the same. Same as a Mavic, same as a Matrix. I'm flying with the sticks right now, so you can pilot it really gently out to the field. You can get under power lines, get it out to the field, and then press resume, slide to the right, and there it goes. Now the automation has taken over. You saw how simple that was, how seamless that was, going from manual mode to autonomous mode. And it works the same way going back, and it actually does a hybrid. So the other question we get is what about pivots? We actually have a pivot in this field right here. If you are flying perpendicular to the pivots, meaning you have to cross that pivot in a short crop like this, that's a problem because we're spraying at about 10 feet high right now. That's gonna run right into the pivot. Now the obstacle avoidance should stop that. What you can also do, push up on the stick. So once I push up on this stick, the drone increases altitude. You can see our altitude increasing on the screen. You see the drone flying higher and higher. I can keep pushing on this stick as high as I want it to go. Once I let go on that stick, drone goes back down and it goes back down to radar controlled height that's 10 feet you saw how smooth that was 10 feet really really smooth back down into the crop because height is really really important when it comes to your pattern height and speed are the two biggest factors the other thing we can do is what happens if we see an obstacle or let's say in this case what if we uh, what if we had an obstacle in the middle of this field we forgot to map it out now the drone will sense it the drone can avoid it by itself. When you're flying fast like this, it'll just stop though. So we can use this right stick. I can pick up my camera. I'm gonna go ahead and take it off to the right right now. I just push to the right. Now the drone is flying to the right. I can fly around that obstacle 
just like that. You can see it on the map. We skip this entire area right there. So you can skip over that obstacle. I'm gonna to go to return point one, which is right ahead of that. Hit resume. The drone takes over automated control. Incredibly intuitive, incredibly seamless. Not to mention the range. We're almost a half mile out. My antennas aren't even folded up and I have perfect signal. Range on these drones is incredible. Especially whenever you couple that with the DJI Relay. So if you have to operate in an area that you might lose connection in you know, one area of the field because you're gonna pass behind a tree and you don't ever wanna lose connection, operate a DJI Relay system, it triangulates your signal from the remote to the drone and back. And while we got time here, I'll show you guys a few settings on here. So the other thing about the DJI system, apart from being incredibly intuitive and easy to use, being in a hybrid between manual and autonomous, we've also got a ton of different settings. If you want the drone to go out there fast or slow, you can change that here. If you want it to go down out there at 100 feet or 10 feet, if you want to reset your home point, you can do all of that here. If you just want it to hover whenever it's done spraying, everything is incredibly easy to set. If you're spraying mountains, this can spray mountains without any pre-mapping with the mountain and hilly mode, they call it. Obstacle bypassing, everything is incredibly easy to monitor, operate, and set. You see right here, whenever I take over autonomous or manual control, just like I did here, the spray system cuts off automatically, just like it did. And if I missed a part in the field, I don't want to go out there and I want to hit it again. We can actually end this operation, switch over to manual mode, increase our flow rate, three gallons per minute. And now I'm spraying manually. I can take this drone wherever I want it to go, spraying with the sticks right here in full control of the spray system. Switch over to our remote. We can find the weeds we want to spray and we can hit them. Turn off the spray system just like that. All right, I'm going to bring this drone in manually and land it. You can see on our obstacle avoidance radar right now, it's actually picking us up. So you see 30 feet in front of the drone, right down here on the bottom of the screen, is showing that it sees us right now. And once it gets too close, it will not let it go any further. You see that red right there? It turns red 15 feet away. It will not let the drone go any closer to us. Just like that, it actually locked the system up. We we'll actually have to disable the obstacle avoidance and bring it down. Safety is a huge priority on these systems. Not just on the software, but on the hardware too. Right here, we have lockouts on our cam lock system so it, and sensors. So if you forget to lock an arm, you can see right here, arm two, not securely fastened, is telling you, I'm not gonna take off unless you lock this in. Once it's locked in, we actually have a dual trigger right there to it will not unlock unless you pull that trigger. Combine that with the radar, combine that with the software, this drone is not just easy but incredibly safe and incredibly efficient. You guys saw how many acres we covered right there. Uh, looks like, uh, well, I missed it. Three tank loads. Three tank loads would have been, let's see, four acres per tank. That would have been 12 acres in less than 20 minutes. If you guys want to see an Agris T50 for yourself, you want to get your hands on one, want to see a demo or want to get one this summer, we can help you with licensing, training, parts, tech support, and the equipment. Give us a call, let us know.